On Monday, January 24, 2022, Belarusian cyber activists disrupted passenger rail traffic in their country. They encrypted ticketing systems and other IT systems. The activists demanded that the government stop hosting Russian troops and demanded the release of 50 political prisoners. In exchange, the activists would restore the encrypted servers. The group also threatened to extend their control into safety-critical railway switching systems if their demands were not met. They said that in such an attack, their goal would be to shut down trains, especially trains carrying Russian troops, and not to threaten human lives. What does this mean for the rest of the world? While many governments have already warned us that national critical infrastructures are likely to be targets of cyber attacks, and this is doubly true in times of physical conflict. Now, some governments have also warned their enemies that cyber attacks on critical infrastructures may constitute acts of war. But these cyber acts of war will have to get in line behind physical acts of war if the Russian and Ukrainian situation escalates. More generally, the, the attack on the Belarusian rail system is yet another example of an attack that targets IT systems but has physical consequences, just like the colonial attack just like the JBS meatpacking attack. Cyber attacks that impair national infrastructures are unacceptable to most societies and their governments. This is why, in the United States, the TSA issued a new cybersecurity directive to the nation's largest pipelines after the colonial incident. Details of the order were originally secret, but the Washington Post later published a version of the order that came from a Freedom of Information Act request. In that version, Directive 2B orders pipeline owners and operators to implement network segmentation sufficient to ensure the operational technology system can operate at necessary capacity even if the information technology system is compromised. This is the heart of the directive. Modern societies depend on their critical infrastructures and IT networks are intrinsically exposed to internet-based attacks, more so than any OT networks really ought to be exposed. So the government ordered pipeline operators to design their security systems to keep the pipeline going, even if these exposed IT assets were breached. But it takes a couple of different things working together to keep a pipeline or a power plant or a rail system to keep them operating while IT networks are crippled. First, we need network segmentation that is strong enough to keep OT networks from being shut down, as they say, in an abundance of caution. Shut down if the IT networks are compromised. Second, we need manual business processes or other things that can compensate for a crippled ticketing system or a crippled billing system or other IT systems that are crippled that, that are essential to operations. Both these measures are necessary. It does no good having a solid OT or industrial network if we have to shut down operations anyway because those operations depend on IT functionality that's been crippled. And it does no good having workarounds for crippled IT functions if the ransomware or other attacks simply move from the IT assets into the OT and force a shutdown that way. Waterfall security solutions can help, especially with the directive to use strong network segmentation. Waterfall's unidirectional security gateways are the strongest possible kind of IT-OT segmentation for OT networks. The gateways are a combination of hardware and software. The hardware is physically able to send data out to IT networks or the internet and is not physically able to send anything at all back into operations. It doesn't matter what kind of chaos has consumed the IT network, no online attacks, no matter how sophisticated. Nothing gets back into operations networks through Waterfall's unidirectional gateways. Unidirectional gateway software makes copies of servers. The software logs into industrial databases, historians, OPC servers, pub subsystems, and other systems. The software logs in normally and asks these systems for all of their latest real-time data. The software converts the data into Waterfall's internal one-way protocols and then pushes the data out to the IT network. On the IT network, the unidirectional gateway software gets the data, again from the one-way hardware, and then inserts the data into an identical server. IT users and IT applications log into those servers and use the replica databases normally. Unidirectional software makes using the unidirectional hardware painless and seamless. These are difficult times. 
If the Ukrainian crisis worsens, we should expect many more of these kinds of incidents that target infrastructures in all of the nations who support either Russia or the Ukraine. And bear in mind, while the incident in Belarus was hacktivists, Russia is a cyber superpower. These superpowers, they have the ability to bring about very sophisticated attacks, bring these attacks to bear on critical infrastructure targets. This was the point of the recent DHS warnings in the United States. And it's a mistake to think that the most powerful threat actors will target only the largest, only the most heavily defended of infrastructures. Smaller installations that are not so heavily defended are very attractive targets as well. The time has come to make our OT and industrial networks impenetrable to online hacktivists, ransomware, and nation-state attacks. For help with this, please go to the Contact Us page on the Waterfall Security Solutions website.